Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to episode four of the mini rebuild. We've stripped all the crash bar off the front and removed all the pipe work, sensors and everything else that's in the way. So now we need to remove the ceiling panels for the engine bay here, which are just on these clips here, which we need to remove and pop out. And this side panel here needs to come out and then we need to remove the slam bar on top so to do that, there is usually some, yeah, some bonnet connectors, some bonnet cables around here we need to pop out. We need to drain the radiator down. We need to drain and remove the header tank. That's a case of dropping these, I think they're 13 mils from memory. These bolts out of here, I think they're 14s. They've got to be removed. I need to drop the hexes out for the latches and for the the lock mechanism on the bonnet itself, the release mechanism that is dropping out. Um, then it's a case of, I say, draining the rad down, removing the intercooler, removing the condenser for the air conditioning unit, which is this panel here. That's got to be clipped out and put to one side because we don't want to discharge the aircon system and then it's a case of draining down the rad behind it popping the front end off fitting the new front end including the radiators condensers and the um intercooler sorry um getting it all bolted back up i don't think we're far off on the bonnet i've given that a little bit of adjustment the frame rail it's not come all the way out but we're going to put the front end on and see how that lines up before we try and manipulate anything um, and then if it needs pulling as I say I've got a, a Land Rover Discovery lined up with a 10 ton winch and we're going to try and anchor the Mini to either the Peugeot or to the Skip if it's still here which is going to have some weight behind it there we go we'll figure out the way so it focuses um, and hopefully the car doesn't get dragged too much across the driveway That'll be an expense I really don't want at the minute. So, yeah, so looking at the existing panelling that was already fitted, obviously it's hard to tell, really, because everything's all kind of mashed up, but that's not too far off. The only thing that's worrying me is that on the other side, there is no gap between the frame leg and the plastics, but these plastics are all smashed up, so I don't know where how low these plastics are meant to be sitting anyway. So until we get the front end on anyway, we're not going to know. So let's crack on. I'm gonna, as I say, I'm gonna pop all these panels out and I'll be back with you. But we've removed the panels, as you can see on top there. Slam bars next. However, now I've removed the panels, you can see just how far back that slam panel's been pushed. It's pushed right back and it's twisted the metal. And looking down at the frame leg down here, you can see it's quite kinked at the top there. So it's definitely moved over this way. And I would say the way it's kinked possibly down a little. So we need to get a, a lateral pull on that and try and pull that out. I mean, if we look at, sorry, if we look at the, the level of the kinkage, new word, I've just made it up, down the bottom, it's a lot worse than what it is at the top, which suggests that it's twisted down when it's been hit. So, Need to get some of the tension off that. So I'll probably jack the engine up, disconnect the engine mount, and see if we can pull that back straight. And the weird thing is, the kink's actually in the middle of the engine mount. So you've got two bolts, there's one there and one there holding the engine mount. So it's strange that that's the weakest point on which it's buckled. Anyhow. So I've managed to undo all the bolts to the slam panel. The tension that come off that when I undid them was horrific. Um, proper bent up. So all the panels are out down the side. We can see that, that frame rail there is nice and straight and exactly where it should be. So we've got to get these T30s out. Hold the latches in. Using our trusty Day Plus I have to say, I've not, I know 
wasn't holding out much hope for this, but it hasn't let me down yet. It's undone everything I've asked it to. No issues whatsoever. So I've also dropped the coolant reservoir off and there's a pipe that's connected around here that we need to pop out by the looks of it. I've disconnected the bonnet latch that's now dangling down in front of the alternator and is there anything else connected up here? That cable's loose, is it out all the way along? Yes it is. So that should now, that's been disconnected as well that off there next thing we need to do is pop this apart and disconnect there we go so as you can see there it's like something you'd find on a bike so pop that back up and that should push down through that hole there okay so that's that completely loose pop the clip off under there Whoa, oh, dear, oh dear. It's a slam panel gone. I don't know it's an improvement or not. <laughs> anyway, uh, we now need to pop out the air conditioning condenser. As I say, intercooler, drain the rad, drop the complete front end off. Well, that'll give us a better view of what we're dealing with. So, if we pull these panels back, we can see some T20s, rather rusty T20s. I'm not entirely convinced this is the first accident this car's had. I'm perfectly honest. And there's another T20 there. So let's get them out and then we should be able to drop the air conditioning condenser out. There's one. And then very carefully, because it'll be loose. The other one out. Right, these clips then will release the condenser. Hang on. Get my hands on it. They just pull up. This wiggles out. I've got to get out the bottom mountains then, and then it should. All being good, just sit down the side out of the way. Right, so here we are. So we've dropped the condenser off. But at the minute, I'm trying to release that from the moulding, which isn't going very well at the moment. So I need to try and get and have a look at the new one and see how that's fixed on. I've got a feeling that's a bolt there that would have gone through the plastic. And there's another one in there holding it in. So as soon as I've fathom that out, I'll get that out. Um, I've got to try and find my grips. I've got a feeling they're in the back of the other car, so I have to wait for that to come back to get that radiator hose there. Got to squeeze that clip in, pop the hose off, drain the rad, and then the front panel can completely come off. Just need to undo this clip here as well, which holds that pipe into the panel. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll swap the fan off this enclosure onto the new enclosure and get everything refitted back. Now look at the difference in that. So I've removed the bent up slam panel up. That's neatened the gap up on the bonnet right up. So I'm loving that line now. That's exactly what I was after. I was worried because I thought that with that frame leg being bent up and twisted like that, it affected the um, strut tower. But what I, I couldn't work it out because the car drove perfectly straight. So if the strut tower was bent, the car would have been pulling. So it literally is just that extended frame leg there. So as long as we can pull it near enough to a point where we can bolt the crash bar and everything on and make sure it's strong, then that should be where we need to get to. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I love it when a plan comes together, <laughs> obviously. The wrecking ball. It's one bad unit.
Oh, sorry, I've got to get your astro turf in. <laughs> this is brilliant. Look at that. Love it. Oh, look at that look. It was made for it. It's meant to be. Bonus. Mate, since you've lived... Foot of the brake. There goes nothing. Sideways pull. That's got the tension on that. Got the foot of the brake, Liam. There goes nothing. That's working. Yeah, a little bit more. Here we go. Let's see if the skip moves. <laughs> the skip's moving. <laughs> yeah. That ain't working. Yeah. Go watch the skip don't tear the drive up. <laughs> right. Let's see the result. That is looking so much better. You've got armor, big armor, no, like, yeah. like sledgehammer. I've got a sledgehammer, yeah. So we've winched it sideways, twatted it with the armor, <laughs> and it seems to have come out a little bit straighter. There's not much in it now. I don't think we're going to get any of this out. The idea would have been to get inside to try and force it back out, but I don't know you can see in there or not, there's the bottom side of the engine mount stopping you getting anything in. So. so there we are guys, bit of carnage, but a lot achieved today. So we've pretty much pulled that frame leg back straight with minimum amount of, minimum amount of kinks in it. Um, we can't really get any straighter than that. I've hammered in some of the material to stop it, it going back and it hasn't, it's stayed pretty solid. Um, that now lines up perfectly with very, very quickly chuck the new front end on and it pulls everything in nice and in line. So happy with that, really, really happy with that. A lot of effort to pull it back straight, but we finally got there. Um, damage wise to the drive. We've got a few little skid marks that will wash away with the rain and the skip has moved significantly. So we've got probably a ton in weight there plus at least a ton and a half in the Mini. And that's what it took to pull that frame rail straight. Crazy. Worn out now. Thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate your support. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I can't wait to catch you next time.